morning. Good morning. <clears throat> and welcome in the name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today we celebrate Reformation Day, not a new doctrine or a new teaching, but rather a return to the purest teachings of Scripture, where we are saved by grace through faith, given to us at the cross and the empty tomb of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This morning our Lord comes to us in both word and sacrament, using divine service setting three as printed in the bulletin. And as we gather in the presence of the one true and triune God, we look to our baptism, where God himself called us by name, washed us clean of all our guilt and iniquity, and delivered to us the good news of salvation through Christ. And so we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. <laughs> o Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, Confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I will speak of your testimonies before kings, O Lord. And shall not be put to shame. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Come, O children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will speak of your testimonies before kings, O Lord. And shall not be put to shame.
Brothers and sisters in Christ, the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us steadfast in your grace and truth. Protect and deliver us in times of temptation. Defend us against all enemies and grant to your church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The first reading for our celebration of Reformation Sunday comes from the Revelation of St. John, the 14th chapter. Then I saw another angel flying directly overhead with an eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on earth, to every nation and tribe and language and people. And he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come. And worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks God. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. In the city of our God. Walk about Zion, go around her, number her towers. Consider well her ramparts, go through her citadels. That you may tell the next generation that this is God.
The epistle reading comes from Paul's letter to the church in Rome, the third chapter. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness, because in his divine forbearance he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time, so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of our boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? By a law of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that one is justified by faith, apart from works of the law. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Rise and sing the Alleluia. The gospel which serves as our text this morning comes according to St. Matthew, the 11th chapter. Jesus said, From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John, and if you are willing to accept it, He is Elijah who is to come. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. But to what shall I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to their their playmates. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We sang a dirge, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look at him a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is justified by her deeds. And this is the Gospel of our Lord. By grace alone, the Word of God has worked Christian faith in our hearts, a faith that binds us together as brothers and sisters in Christ and with all the Christians who have gone before us and after us throughout history. And so let us boldly confess that faith as we speak together the words of the Nicene Creed as printed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today, Reformation Sunday, is a day of great celebration. We celebrate our faith, we celebrate our Christian heritage, and we celebrate the Reformers, those men and women who risked their very lives to stand up to a church that was in error and to return to the pure Word of God. Our celebration is marked by a special service, by traditional songs of the Reformation, by the changing of our pyramids to red after being green for over 20 weeks now. At Lutheran churches around the world, a variety of festivals are taking place. Special services, mission speakers, special presentations, and probably more than a few potlucks. This is a day to rejoice. This is a day to celebrate. And so it might seem a little bit strange that our text from the Gospel reading for this day of great celebration involves Jesus talking about not dancing. Not in a puritanical kind of way like, thou shalt not dance for that is an indication the devil is in thy shoes. No, we can dance if we want to. We can leave this world behind. Jesus isn't condemning joyful gyrations here, but instead he is drawing an analogy. He says, to what shall I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to their playmates, we played the flute for you and you did not dance. We sang a dirge, and you did not mourn. He's not condemning the act of dancing, but rather he is convicting the world of its selfish and childish behavior. You see, the world is like that group of spoiled children, and it expects everyone to play along with its games. Jesus compares the world to children throwing a temper tantrum when things don't go their way. Hey, we played the flute and you wouldn't dance for us. We sang a dirge and you didn't mourn. Why don't you just do things the way that we want you to? And now how fitting of reading that is for our Reformation celebration. Today, no matter how we might celebrate, whether it be through psalms, songs, or even dancing, today we are celebrating those who do not dance, those who defy the ways of the world, and refuse to do its bidding. And like every Sunday, our celebration revolves around our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And this is the point that Jesus was making in our Gospel reading. Though many people had expectations of him, Jesus did not dance the way that they wanted him to. So many people stopped following Jesus, stopped believing in him, because he wasn't living up to their expectations. They had ideas of what the Messiah should be doing. They had ideas of how Jesus should carry out his work, and when it didn't go their way, well, they didn't want anything to do with it. I had high hopes for this Jesus guy, but he's just not doing things the way that he should. You know, Jesus, if you were really the Messiah, you would be driving out the Romans, or you would be giving us more stuff, or you would be putting, patting me on the back more, or you would be making my house bigger, or, 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 or. Everyone had their own idea of what Jesus should have been doing. And none of those ideas fit with what Jesus was actually doing. And so, like insolent children, they blamed Jesus. We wanted you to do this, but you didn't. We played a flute and you wouldn't dance. We sang a dirge and you wouldn't mourn. So we don't like you anymore. And it wasn't just Jesus himself. The word of God and those who spoke it were always challenged, always confronted, always expected to bend to the ways of the world. Jesus says that when he came like a commoner, the people accused him of being a drunkard and a glutton, a filthy friend of tax collectors and sinners. But before him, John the Baptist came in a very different way, living outside of society, boldly proclaiming God's word in the wilderness, drawing crowds to him. But the world wasn't satisfied there either and didn't like his message. So they said, he has a demon. We don't like him either because he won't do things our way. And all the prophets, 
all throughout the Bible met with similar resistance when they spoke God's word in this rebellious and sin-filled world. Some of them were driven out from their hometowns because nobody wanted to hear it anymore. Some of them were imprisoned, exiled, or beaten because what they said didn't go along with what the people wanted to hear. Some of them were killed, executed brutally for speaking God's word and daring to defy the status quo, telling the world that it might be wrong. All because they wouldn't dance to the world's songs, wouldn't change God's word to fit what the world wanted to hear. But, Jesus says, wisdom is justified by her deeds. Jesus says that what the world calls foolish, it will be proven as true wisdom. If we wanted to forest gump it, wisdom is as wisdom does. They all could have given in to the ways of the world. All of these prophets, all of these speakers, Jesus himself. They could have changed their tune and danced to the songs that the world wanted them to, and they would have had a much more comfortable life. Would have gotten along much better with people around them. Would have been seen as much more open and accepting and loving. But to do so would be to put the approval of the world ahead of the, the approval of God. The children in the marketplace, they might taunt you for not playing along with their game, but how much does their opinion actually matter in the long run? The world might taunt you for not dancing and playing its game, and it might seem easier to just dance along to the world's song to appease them. But how much does the world's opinion truly matter when you are told to give up the truth of God himself? And so Jesus, John the Baptist, all the prophets, they all refused to give in to the world's selfish and childish demands, refused to dance to the tune of the world, refused to value the world's opinion over God's truth. So many people wanted Jesus to be something else, to be an earthly ruler, a leader of a rebellion, a source of free food. They wanted him to dance this way and that, to bow to their whims, to be their own personal Jesus, doing exactly what they wanted him to do. But Jesus Christ, the long-promised Messiah, he had come to do so much more than any of these things. <coughs> Jesus came not just to fulfill one or two earthly wishes, but to bring about an eternal peace between God and man. Jesus came not just to dance a little jig and entertain our worldly desires, but came to fight the eternal fight, to give himself as a sacrifice in our place upon the cross, to suffer and to die, to pay the price of our sin, so that we could be reunited with our Heavenly Father. The world, like children, didn't understand that and thought that they knew better. But despite their mockery, despite their childish taunts, Despite all the ridicule and shame and pain and suffering heaped upon his holy head, Jesus Christ refused to dance the world's dance and instead did what was actually important, did what he had come to us to do, to bring about God's free gift of salvation by grace through faith. And upon doing so, you would think that the world would be silenced, You'd think that the world would realize that their petty song and dance couldn't even compare with God's truth and glorious gift. But you'd be wrong. Even after Christ's eternal sacrifice was complete, even after he died and rose again from the grave, the world kept trying to change the tune, kept trying to bend Jesus to their ways to make him dance for them. And so we needed the Reformation. By the 1500s, the church had gone so far astray, had wandered so far from God's truth, that many Christians were convinced that they had to earn God's forgiveness. They had to pay for it with good works or by giving cash to the church. They had turned away from the real Jesus, the one who loved us so much that he freely died in our place. And they had substituted some useless puppet who would dance for them and then give the church what they wanted. But through God's grace, the eyes of some were opened to the truth of the scriptures. It involved many, many brave souls, but it essentially revolved around Martin Luther and his refusal to do the world's dance. 
through Luther, he was, the world was changed constantly. Through Luther, the world was changed. He was challenged continually, but he did not dance the way others wanted him to. Martin Luther saw the glorious truth of the scriptures, and he recognized that the church was in error. Their teachings were wrong. He never wanted to break away from the Catholic Church, never wanted to start a new church, but rather wanted to correct its course, wanted to bring the church and all of God's people back to the truth that they had veered from. And so he stood up. He defied those who tried to silence him. He refused to dance to their song of error and turned to the undefiled word of God. And for that, he was persecuted. He was convicted of heresy. He was threatened, ridiculed, shunned, excommunicated from the church that he loved. But through it all, Luther and the Reformers refused to dance to the ways of the world, refused to give in despite the danger that it put them in, refused to trade God's precious gift of salvation for the childish games of this world. And still today, the Reformation continues. We celebrate those who did not dance in the past, our Lord, the prophets and apostles, the reformers, and all those who stood fast in the one true faith before us to preserve the truth that we still have and celebrate today. And as we celebrate them, we continue their work. We ourselves, all of us, as we live out God's word, we cling fast to the grace of God and we too refuse to dance to the songs of the world around us. Even though we are opposed and told what we're supposed to believe, what we're supposed to say, we do not dance that way to the way that others want us to and just take part in the lazy, sinful ways of the world. Instead, we hear the word of the Lord and we keep it. For most of my life, I sought ways to be rebellious, to rip the system, stick it to the man. In high school and college, I had long hair, no hair, hair of all kinds of combinations and lots of different colors. I had chrome spikes on my jackets, wore combat boots, torn and ragged clothes, even an orange t-shirt with blue polyester slacks. Now, admittedly, the last one was more due to a lack of fashion sense than rebellion, but that's still kind of rebellious, right? Earrings, makeup, late-night gatherings at Perkins with friends to solve all the world's problems and talk about how people just don't get it. I was always trying to find a way to stand out, to tell this world, you can't tell me what to do. And you know where I actually found it? Here, in the pulpit in living a life according to God's perfect and eternal word. All that other stuff, all the dressing up, all the trying to scare people, that was actually exactly what the world expected me to do, exactly what it wanted me to do, and it didn't really change a thing. The whole time I thought I was running against the wind, I was actually just doing the world's dance without even knowing it. But if you want to be a rebel, if you really want to stand against the world, then stand up for truth, the absolute truth. Boldly proclaim that Jesus Christ is the one and only way to heaven, that there is no God besides the one true and triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Speak the eternal truth of God's word unashamedly, both law and gospel. Turn your back on the world's idea of fun and excitement and embrace that real peace and joy of God's word. Stop pretending that you've done nothing that needs forgiving and lay your sins, your whole wretched life, at the foot of the cross and thank God daily for his free gift of forgiveness and salvation. That's how you defy the world. That's how you truly rebel. And as you do these things, know the truth of God. Know that it is very simple and very personal. He loves you enough that he gives you his law to guard and protect your life and your faith. But by that law, nobody can be saved. 
Nobody can do enough good works because we are all sinners and fall short of the glory of God. But by grace, through faith, we are justified, proclaimed innocent by the blood of Jesus Christ. His sacrifice has paid for all of our sins, and there is nothing that we need to or even could contribute to add to it. It is finished. He died for you. He rose for you. He gives you faith through his word and sacraments. Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, has done it all for you by grace. And through your God-given faith, you, a sinner who deserves nothing but eternal wrath, will rise again from the grave to eternal life in heaven. This is the pure gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and nothing at all that the world can come up with can come even close to comparing with the eternal joy and peace that the truth brings us as Christians. The world is going to play its songs and tell us that we should embrace our natural instincts, that we should gratify all our desires, that we should live for the moment, live for ourselves, and don't worry about anything else. It's a seductive song, to be sure. And so many people start to sway to that enticing rhythm because it's so easy to do. But we don't have to dance to that song. Hear the call of the world for what it truly is. At best, it is a childish song trying to get your attention and make you do something foolish. At worst, it's a siren song luring you to your eternal doom as you turn away from God's truth. Either way, by the grace of God, it is a song that you now know is worthless. A song that means nothing at all in the light of God's everlasting truth. A song that you don't have to dance to anymore. And when we refuse to dance, when we refuse to do things the way that the world says we should, we don't do it just to be rebellious or cool or to be our own person because that's just a different version of the world's dumb song. We are not thumbing our nose at the world, but rather we are proclaiming and celebrating that we have something far, far better, something real, something that we truly need, something that is eternal and actually worth celebrating. And in our celebration, we are not trying to isolate ourselves from the world, but rather we share our joy with everyone, inviting the whole world to come and not dance with us. We proclaim not only that we have the real and free love of Jesus Christ, but that his love is for everyone. We boldly proclaim God's truth, calling sin, sin, and freely pointing sinners to the only source of forgiveness. We do it not to condemn people, but to save them from eternal condemnation. We show the world that Jesus would not dance to its song, but instead did something far better by dying and rising again from the grave to forgive us of all of our sin. We show the world the folly of its sinful dance and how ridiculous it truly is. We show the world that we will not be swayed by its taunts and jeers because we know the eternal truth of Jesus Christ. We will not dance and we cannot be silenced. For God himself has suffered and died in our place, has risen again from the tomb to eternal glory. And by his cross alone, by his empty tomb alone, you are forgiven of every one of your sins, and eternal life in heaven is yours. To God alone be all glory, now and forever. Amen. And now that peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in true faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.
In addition to the prayers that we have listed in the bulletin, we also include in our prayers this morning Betty Licht, who was hospitalized this week. With these and all other petitions that go unspoken, but are heard by our Heavenly Father, we come before his throne of grace now in prayer. O Almighty God, we give you thanks and praise for all your goodness and tender care, especially on this Reformation Festival. We thank you for the gift of your Son and for the revelation of your will and grace. Implant your word in us and give us fertile hearts to keep it and bring forth its good fruit in our lives. Protect us from the wiles of this world and strengthen us to live lives that boldly proclaim your eternal truth. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O God of grace, keep us steadfast in your word and prevent our wayward hearts from following false gospels that lead us away from you. Provide your church with faithful pastors who preach in purity and joy that we are saved by your grace alone, through faith alone, because of Christ alone. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty Father, you have blessed us with the gift of baptism by which you cleanse us of our sin daily. Bless those who celebrate their baptisms this week, including Steve, Jordan, Jennifer, Dwight, Molly, and Steve. Make all your children bold to live a sanctified life and turn our hearts away from the evil temptations of this world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O gracious Lord, before sin entered the world, you gave us the gift of marriage, that husband and wife would love and cherish each other until death. Bless Brian and Dawn and all those who celebrate anniversaries this week. Defend marriage from the satanic assaults of our culture that would cheapen and redefine it. And bless all our homes, that they would be places of joy, respite, and peace amid the trials of this world. Lord, in your mercy. Mighty God, you have great power, and yet you act with mercy. Teach those who lead us to use power rightly for the preservation of order, the accomplishment of justice, the protection of life, and the defense of the weak. Give us wise, godly, and faithful leaders who will follow your commands and serve with integrity and honesty. Protect us from deception and hatred during this contentious election season, and give all people wisdom and discernment that we may fully appreciate the blessings you have given us as citizens of this great nation. Crush the efforts of all who seek to sow violence, hatred, and division among us, and grant us peaceful, honest, and fair elections that we may prosper under your care. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious God, remember all those who face sickness, sorrow, loneliness, addiction, mental illness, infirmity, or any need of body, mind, or spirit, especially Betty, Arla May, Tom, Don, Abigail, all our shut-ins, and all those we name in our hearts. Comfort them by your Holy Spirit, that they would acknowledge their afflictions as the manifestation of your fatherly will and grant them peace and healing as you know is best. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, you have given us the certainty of sins forgiven through your Son, set forth as the propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. So lead us this day to eat and drink your holy body and precious blood in repentance and true faith, now and always. Lord, in your mercy. From generation to generation, preserve your church, O Lord, and each of us as members of Christ's body, that we may not surrender the true gospel for any reason, but be kept in this faith and fear throughout the days of our earthly pilgrimage, until that day when we and all your people shall stand before the judgment seat of Christ to receive the reward you have prepared for us and all who have loved his appearing. We boldly ask these petitions and all else that goes unspoken, but is heard by you. We ask through the merits of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, 
and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Seated for our closing hymn, hymn 655. Again, a welcome to all of you, and what a joy it is to gather together in God's holy house to hear that word of God, which has been preserved from generation to generation, and to know that by that word alone, we are saved by grace through faith, through the cross and the empty tomb of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For those of you who are wondering why the last hymn wasn't on the hymn board, as Melanie put it, I went five crazy on the hymns today, and we ran out of the number five. So she did not forget. It's not her fault. That's just the way it is sometimes. So, um, I draw your attention to the, all the announcements in the bulletin. Another uh, wonderful week and a busy time of the year here at the church. Um, this next Sunday, we'll be having our annual trivia contest to support the youth of our congregation. Um, we have a sign-up sheet on the table in the back there. We're looking for volunteers to help serve as judges, runners, to help prepare the food, serve the food. Um, all the supplies, I believe, are covered, and um, if somebody wants to make a salad or bring some side dishes, that would be great, but we do have a thriving card that's gonna be paying for the bulk of everything. Um, but if you have prizes you'd like to give, and we would encourage everybody to uh, round up a team and come. These are general knowledge questions. We always have a good time, or at least I do, and um, just a great time of fellowship and getting together um, and supporting the youth of our church. So we encourage everybody to take part in that. Um, Saturday at 3.30, the youth will be gathering together here at the church to set up for that. And that is their koinonia, their fellowship time with catechism. During that time, we will also be exploding pumpkins again this year in the parking lot. So if anybody would like to see that happen, we'll probably be doing that about 3.45 or so. Give them some time to gather together and prepare. So uh, feel free to come over and join us for that. Um, also, please note that daylight savings time comes to an end on Sunday, so be sure to adjust your clocks accordingly or let Alexa do her thing and set it back for you. 
The week after that, on November 10th, we will be having our annual turkey dinner. We also have a sign-up sheet in the back for that on the same table. So uh, we encourage everybody, again, uh, prayerfully consider how you can help out in these endeavors of our church and uh, sign up. Uh, it's always a great time, no matter what it is that you do, as we are serving together as brothers and sisters in Christ. God's richest blessings to each and every one of you on the rest of your week, and may he bring you back safely to his holy house in the days and weeks to come.